Hi friends, Mickey from Figma here with another study hall. Today we're going to be talking about Figma design and we're going to walk through some basics in Figma to help you get started and working with your students. I call this one first lesson in Figma. What we're going to be making today is a very simple card layout that uses shapes, imagery, text, as well as some core features that can be found in Figma, such as auto layout and making components. So let's go. I'm going to begin by navigating over here to a space in Figma. I'm moving around the space by holding down the space bar to traverse the canvas. What I want to begin is a frame. So I'm going to go ahead, go up here and choose the frame tool. You can also press the F key. I'm going to go ahead and draw a frame. Now, as I add things to the canvas, you'll notice that they layer up over here in the layers panel. When I select that object on the canvas, such as this frame, when I look over here on the right, I can see all of the properties that are available to me that I can use to change this frame, such as position, size, and color. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this frame, I'm gonna go over to frame, I'm gonna choose iPhone 13. So then this way I can get a sense of a common size. So this is the iPhone 13 size. With that frame selected, I can actually browse and peruse some of the other frame sizes available to me, such as Apple Watches, laptops, and even print sizes. So I'm gonna begin with this frame by naming it. I'm gonna double click on the frame name and title this one card. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add two very basic shapes to this card. The first one being a rectangle. So you can notice the rectangle option up here under shape tools. I'm gonna draw that rectangle. And what I'm gonna do is size this out to my frame. The first thing that you're gonna realize is we wanna make sure that the objects that we're creating get added into this frame. So here in the layers panel, I may see that the rectangle is above the frame. I can easily just drag it down to that layer to make sure that it's inside. So you'll notice that when I scale this, it is now inside of the frame. If for whatever reason you want objects to expand beyond the bounds of the frame, you can always select the frame, come over here and unclip that content. So there we go. So basically what we've done is we've drawn out a frame. That frame is about iPhone 13 size, which is 390 pixels wide and about 844 pixels tall. We've then added this rectangle into our frame and we can scale it and size it to match that frame size. So let's set our height here as being about 200 pixels. With the rectangle selected, I can come over here to the right and type in that value and you'll see it respond. If I want to, I can also change this color by scrolling down in this panel over here with the properties and changing that color to whatever I want as the fill color. So I'm gonna set this light blue example to begin with. Next, what I'm gonna do is come over here to my shape tool area and choose an ellipse. So you can also press the O key to create an ellipse. I'm gonna go ahead, hold down the shift key on my keyboard and drag and draw out a circle. And what I'm able to do is then snap it exactly here. So you can see that the center is snapping to the bottom of that rectangle and the center vertically is snapping to the center of that frame. So I now have this circle there. What I'm gonna do with this circle is go down here and add a stroke value to it. Coming down with this circle selected, going down the properties panel, I'm gonna click on stroke and I'm gonna choose a color, let's make it white. And over here I can actually change the size of that as well. So I'm gonna increase that size to about a value of 12. Now I can close that panel out and you can see what I have here. So you can see we're already making pretty good progress on our card. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some text. I'm gonna press the T key, or you can choose a tool from up here in the top left, and I can draw out the area that I want to add this text. I'm gonna make this an introduction card, so I'm gonna add my name here. I'm gonna put in Miguel. Cardona. And what I'm going to do is I want to change some of the properties of this text to be formatted the way that I want it to be formatted. I'm going to select that text, 
I'm gonna come over here to the properties panel. I'm gonna look for those text properties. I'm gonna change this value to about 32. And then I'm gonna change the font weight. Right now I'm using the default font enter. You could change the font if you wish, but I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm gonna change the font weight to be bold. And I can see that it's bolded there. One of the other properties that I'm gonna select here is the auto height property. This auto height property is gonna allow the text field to expand as there is more text available. Another thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to expand the width of this and I can change that value up here. I want the width of this text field to be about 320 pixels wide. So there we go. And then I'm going to just drag this until it's perfectly centered in that space. Now I'm going to select that text and I'm going to choose another text property over here in the properties panel and that's going to be centered. So there we go. I have my text there. It's centered. It's available. It's about the way that I want it to be. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this text field. I'm going to hold down the option key. If you're on Windows, it's going to be the alt key. I'm going to drag this down and make a copy. Another way that you can make a copy is by hitting command D on a Mac or control D on a PC. And what that will do is create a duplicate directly on top of that previous object. So I just created a duplicate and now I'm going to change some of these properties here. I want this text to be about a font size of 16. I would like it to be regular and I'm going to have it be left aligned. So here I actually have a bunch of text that I'm gonna paste into this space and I'm gonna paste this in. So this is text that the students can type in. You can insert a little bio here. You could ask them to fill out a little bit about themselves. So I've added this text here and you can also see I've added some emoji as well. So this is coming along pretty good. And what I want to do now is I want these objects to be spaced out appropriately. So I have this text field here right? And I would like this to be centered. I have this text field and I'd like this to be centered. And what I'm going to use now is Figma's auto layout feature. And what the auto layout feature is going to do is space everything out for me pretty evenly. So I'm going to select the card up here and you'll notice that with this frame selected, there's an option over here on the right called auto layout. You can also press shift A and it will create the auto layout for you. Now, when I create this auto layout, you notice that each object is on top of each other. And what I want is for this circle to be grouped with this background that I have here. So I'm going to select both of those objects together and I'm going to hit Command G or Control G if you're on Windows. If you're looking for it in a menu, I can right click right here and I can choose Group Selection. So these are now grouped together. And now that they are grouped together, what I can do is now make this an auto layout frame. So I'm gonna select this card. I'm gonna to go to auto layout. And when I click this together, you'll see that all of these objects are now stacked. The benefit of auto layout is that it will grow and contract depending on the contents that you give it. So if I was to remove this text here, you'll see that the text now, the whole frame condenses to what is currently available. So I'm going to select this card. I'm going to go to my auto layout frame. I'm going to click this little object over here that allows you to have independent padding. And what I'm going to do is go down to the bottom padding and give ourselves a little bit more space for the bottom of the card. I'm going to set that value to be about 48 and it's going to give us some bottom area for our text here. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the whole card layout again. And you'll notice that when I hover, I can actually see the spacing and the padding that's available here. What I can do is I can actually increase or decrease that value. Once again, this is a feature of the auto layout that gives you the ability to control these values. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to double click on that and I'm going to set that spacing value to be about 32. Right, so it looks all nice and even. This looks pretty good. Another benefit of this is I can rearrange these elements. I can select this top group here and press the down key and move it up and down. So if I wanted to add additional elements in here, let's say I wanted to add another text field, I can copy this and I can paste it and add it right there. Likewise, we can also just duplicate it hitting Command D and you'll see that it also gets added there. So if you wanna add additional paragraphs to this card, you can easily do so. 
So our card is looking pretty good. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna select the whole card. I'm gonna go over and choose clip content. And then I'm gonna choose this option over here, which is corner radius. This corner radius is gonna round out those edges for our card, making it look a little bit softer and approachable. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna round out those corners. I'm gonna drag that value, or you can set it by clicking on that field and then typing in a value. I'm gonna choose 24. So our card is looking pretty good. However, we do need to add an image. I'm going to grab an image that I have here on my desktop. I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways of doing this. I'm gonna to go to my documents and then here I have a folder called profile pictures. So here we go, I have this folder called profile pictures and I can drag this image right onto my desktop. So I can drag the image onto the desktop. And then what I can do is I can right click, I can copy the properties, and then now I can click into that circle and now I can also paste those properties. There's a couple of other different ways that you can do this as well. So let's say if I just wanna place the image directly onto that circle, I can command click, or if you're on Windows, control click onto that circle. And then I can go over here to the fill. I can click on that fill and you'll see that I have some options here, these color options. However, I can actually change the fill to instead behave as an image. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna select image and you'll see that it brings up this default checkered pattern representing that an image should go here. I am now gonna go choose image and you can see I'm navigated already to my directory on my computer where I have this image and I can now paste that. So there we go. Here, I've now added this image to my card. If I want to, I can also navigate and copy this from another space and then paste that image there. Okay, so we're almost ready to go. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this card and I'm gonna make it into a component. A component is a reusable object in Figma. So we can make this card and you can just have your students fill the card out for you. I'm gonna select the card, I'm gonna come right up here and this little four diamond shape here is representative of a component. So I'm gonna create this as a component. So you can see that this is now my card component. Over here on the left, you'll see that we have some layers. Right now, some of these layers don't make the best sense, so we can go ahead and rename them. Up here, I can type in avatar group. I can rename this one. This is our photo, so I'm going to say avatar photo. And then this rectangle right here, this is just kind of like the banner image, so I'm going to say, or the banner color, so I'm going to say banner. So now we have these named and it makes much more sense, all of the objects that we have inside of our card. So the cool thing about the card is that if I now go to my assets, you will see that this card is now listed here. So this is the card that I have. When your students have joined this file, so when they are now in this file, so let's say, you know, here, this is a student that's joining me here as a multiplayer cursor, they can also bring in these elements. So they could bring in their own card and so here I am, and there, there's the, the other me, and they can now edit some of these values. Let's say they want to change their own name, they can double click that, and they could change their name so they could say, you know, my name. And as they add things, so like let's say if they have a very long name, you know, they could hit return, and then as they fill this out, this will get expanded and grow with their name. So let's say I type this in as students name and then they can fill this out with their own content they say you know hi i am a student from new york i enjoy uh let's say math class right so the student is able to add their own content to that as well let's just fill that out a little bit more and they can also change up the image so if they control click or command click on the image itself they can come down here and choose this fill and then choose an image of their own. Let's say, let me grab another image that they might be able to use in that space. Let me grab a little image of myself here. 
right? So now a student will be able to choose image. They can pick that new image, right? There we go, <laughs> there, there, there's me again. And then they have their own version. They can also command click or control click right onto this shape and change the color. So they can further customize their own card by changing all sorts of things. They can change the font. So they can choose, let's say cabin, there we go. So I have a new font right there. Or let's say Meriwether. Right, and so they can now customize this card and, and make it their own. Let's say too, if they want to add an image, I have a fun way to add additional images from a free resource. This right here is the inserts menu, and I'm gonna go ahead to plugins, and I'm gonna type in Unsplash. So Unsplash. So Unsplash is a free community where people can pull images from. These images are now available here, and what I can do is I can command click on that background and then add in an image and it's now in there. So I can now further customize this card to be what it is I want it to be. It provides a great place for the students to express themselves while they are introducing themselves to you. I can even select this background color here. I can darken that up and then I can select the text inside of it as well and make that white. So all of this even being controlled by you still. So your main component can still change those instances. Even if you change things in your main component, as long as they're not overridden by the student on theirs, you can still control them. Let's say on the card itself, I would like to add a stroke. I can click here and I can add a white stroke and let's make that a little bit larger and uh, let's put that on the outside. So here now, you might be able to have a little difficulty seeing it. Let's change that stroke color to a different color. Let's set it to black. So you can see that now that it's been added to the main one and hasn't been overridden by the student, that the student now has this. What's great is that you can now have a whole bunch of these available and then your students can kind of fill them out with their own content and then you can easily peruse and see, okay, well, well, who's here and, and, and who is doing this? If you are a FigJam user, you can also add these cards. So you can just copy and paste these cards right into FigJam as well, and the students can, can then review themselves or they can add them to any files. And it's a really good way to get them to introduce themselves to one another. I will be publishing a version of this in community, so figma.com slash at education. And this way you'll be able to download an example and you'll be able to try it out on your own. So hopefully this was helpful. And as always, happy designing. Thank you.